Tech groups sue DeSantis <gasps> I knew over it. social media bill. I knew it. I thought this. I thought it was gonna. I, th I thought someone in Florida was gonna file a lawsuit against the big tech companies immediately. Instead, it's the way around. You get you get a few minutes, a few days, and whoever strikes first, it's basically when if you're gonna two countries are gonna go to war, one of them gets to declare the war and invade. And if you wait, the other one's going to invade you. So you invade first. Hmm. Let's, let, let's, let's see what we got here. They say two technology groups on Thursday filed a lawsuit in Tallahassee Federal Court challenging a controversial bill that Governor DeSantis said is aimed at cracking down on social media censorship. But opponents argue it's an un, unconstitutional infringement of free speech. That's factually not true. It's not. Well, it's the free speech of the corporation. Right. Yeah. But uh, the, the issue is, so we, we've had an interesting conversation about this. Uh, the New York Times, for instance, if they take an article from you and publish it, it's their speech. What happens if you write the article, submit it through a submissions portal, and then they publish it? That's actually your speech, even though they chose to publish through a submission portal. Does that make sense? No. And that's the way it works right now. So no, this does not actually stop the corporation's free speech. If no, no, of course. I mean, I agree with you, but that's the, arg that's the argument that they're making. There's, it's, it's a fake argument. It's a fake argument, but all of this is good. You know, oh, right, I mean, right, it's right. got to go through the courts. It's got to be fought. You know, yep. frankly, the thing that needs to happen right now is, you know, you've got to get some conservative donors putting some money into into fighting this in a in a in a public in a public way. Let's get some C4s. Let's get people out there pushing this. Everybody knows. I think, I think that a C3 a could huge do this. Five hundred one C3 could handle this. Sure. It's not political. Sure. Just going after censorship in general is a tax deductible cause. Uh, yeah, and 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 supporting some of and supporting some of this pushback, you know, even if DeSantis will lose, because it's you know as you know it's not just one thing on one issue, you know he's doing the the you know the, the riot stuff, he's doing other stuff, uh, th you know they're going to take him to court for for over everything. <laughs> yep. And it seems, I mean, sadly, I, look, I loved Ron DeSantis. I think Florida is the best state in the union right now, but unfortunately, we're alone, and this has got to change. I love it. Here, let me read this quote. Americans everywhere should oppose Florida's attempt to run roughshod over the First Amendment rights of <laughs> private online businesses, <laughs> says Carl Zabo, vice president and general counsel of NetChoice. Yes. By weakening the First Amendment rights of some, Florida weakens the First Amendment rights of all. Uh -huh. Let me just explain something. The bill targets, I think they have to have, they have, to have like 100 million users. No. Oh, 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 since when have, has the left been like, but what about the ultra wealthy <laughs> and the, and the mu massive multinational corporations? Who's going to protect them? That's where they're at right now. This is the funniest thing. I saw somebody, uh, they were commenting about uh, Ted Cruz. Hmm. He made a comment about your medical choices should be your choice and no government should intervene. And then all these leftists are like high-fiving like, oh yeah, now do abortion. And I'm like, that's really funny because you can make fun of Ted Cruz, but what about the disaffected liberals who have always been in favor of regulating massive corporations or who have been pro-choice the whole time and are telling you you're insane? Hmm. See, they ignore people like me because it's inconvenient. It's convenient for me to a certain degree because then I don't get the smear pieces coming out all the time. But yeah, when I say 10 years ago, we got to regulate these massive corporations that are, that, are, that are stealing the commons and polluting our waters and colluding with foreign interests. And then they said the same thing. Now I'm still saying the same thing. Oh, but it benefits conservatives. So now they're not going to say anything. And then what they'll do is when a conservative comes out, they say, you just hate free speech. You're, you're, you, you're going to regulate these companies, take away their free speech rights. Because corporations are people, my friend. The chutzpah of these people is, is <laughs> so <laughs> far chutzpah. beyond. It's, it's so far beyond anything. Because, I mean, in, in my mind, there's, there, it's very simple. Is there such a thing as a public square? Yes. Is it possible for a public square to be owned in 2021 by a private mm -hmm. entity? Yes, of course. Yep. Yes, of course. This is obvious. You know, this is what a lot of the libertarian types and the people, you know, frankly, who are taking a ton of money from, you know, from big tech are, are saying is that they're denying that this is a thing. Um, and the other thing is, if you, you know, you are allowing these corporations to have more power than governments. Yeah. India, the, the people's gone. Hungary, Poland, the U.S., uh, all these other places have gotten into conflicts with these big tech comp companies. The big co tech companies usually end up winning. Yeah. And this is and it's and it's and it's uh, it's crazy because they are unaccountable to anybody. I mean, is this a and it really speaks to what this government is. My favorite group of people in, in all of this are the libertarians 
who sh- you know should be on the side of the free speech of the individual, but instead are on the on the side of free speech for the massive multinational mm-hmm. corporations and the oligarchs, oligarchs behind them. The reason I love it is because they hate they hate them. Mark Zuckerberg, Facebook, they hate libertarians. They despise them. They ban them and shut them down. And so you have like there's three groups right now. You've got the the Democrat large left umbrella, which includes some leftists who, uh, as Glenn, Glenn Greenwald, but I think it was Glenn Green, Greenwald who said this, they're the one group of people with the least ability to learn because they advocate for censorship and then they keep getting censored. Mm. You have conservatives who are like, well, we normally don't, we aren't for regulation, but in this instance, we recognize the importance of it and we must have our rights protected. And I'm like, makes sense to me. And then you have libertarians who are like, we are being banned and smeared and insulted. I hope Facebook has the right to remove us because in 20 years, our ideology won't exist anymore. That's what, it, it's, it's, it's the yes. most amazing thing, the libertarians. I don't know. I had a long argument a couple years ago with this libertarian guy. And he's like, we shouldn't be telling what these private businesses can or can't do. And I was like, bro, fine. I don't care. I was like, I'm not, a, I'm, I'm not, I'm not lib right. I'm not in your bubble. So when you, when Facebook decides to delete every single libertarian candidate and every single libertarian personality, which they're going to do, and they do, anti-war.conference. We had Scott Horton in here. He got, uh, anti-war.com got censored. Why? It's anti-establishment. They want war. They want bombs. So they get banned too. And then they advocate for their own banning. It's remarkable. Like, well, they shouldn't ban us, I guess, but it is a private company. All right. Well, in five years, you won't be a part of the conversation and I won't have to argue with with, with you anymore. So whatever. Right. There should also be a distinction. I mean, I'm, I'm not actually for making this distinction because I think that both of these things, both, you know, the social media companies and Google you know, and, and other search engine companies. Um, I mean, we, we have the same problem with both of them, right? But the libertarians and the phony conservatives will, um, y- you know, I mean, they, they will they will say that, uh, that uh, you know, Facebook and these social media companies, um, you know, that you have alternatives. You, you don't have to exist on them. Right. But as far as the search engine goes, I mean, Google, uh, Google is really the, the institutional memory yeah. of Western civilization at this point. And, 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 and you, 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 just, you take something out of the search engine and it's I, gone. I often see stories pop up from the Gateway Pundit. Yeah. And I don't like, I don't, not a big fan of using them for the most part. You know, they have some credibility for some writers, but I'll see a story and I'll be like, okay, I, I want to, I want to fact check this and I'll go on Google and I'll type it in. It's like, doesn't, doesn't exist. Like, yeah, really? There's a bunch of sites that are just non-existent on, on Google. Andrew Yang put it really well when he was talking about antitrust not being the right answer. There needs to be something else. When he said, how many of you want to use Bing? And everyone like, laughs. He's like, exactly. Right. Nobody's going to use Bing. It's like Google is the service. Google is what people use. But DuckDuckGo is, 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 is moving in, and it's, it's, it's an opportunity to use something. The problem is we're trying to market, right? That's the thing. I, I invent, uh, look, look at this. I got a bottle of water, and I want to get this bottle of water to as many people as possible. So you go where the people are. Fa- uh, Facebook and Google have bought up the largest spaces, and they are now privately owned public spaces. Do you know? Do you know what a pops is in New York? A privately owned public space? No. So this this is what happened with Occupy Wall Street, Zuccotti. The where they had the protest was privately owned, but because it was open to the public, they couldn't evict the protesters. Hmm. They were allowed to protest there. So I, I try explaining this to people. I'm like, okay, check it out. So, so the, the ultra rich people like Deutsche Bank or whatever, they have these pu- privately owned public spaces. And the courts ruled that be, you can privately own them, but as long as you welcome the public in, you can't shut down First Amendment activity. Mm-hmm. So Occupy Wall Street was allowed to stay so long as they like this. What's the benefit of owning them then? So they buy property for the property value, but then what do you do with it? They turn it into a public space and just let it be a park or something. There's probably some right off there somewhere, some city benefit. I'm sure there's some right off there. But yeah. re- regardless, I don't know exactly other than if you're open to the public, then First Amendment rights apply to you, not to them. Right. And so now you have Twitter. It is a public space, a public forum. It's already been ruled a public forum in the past, although that did get overturned by the Supreme Court. People go there to speak. A private corporation owns it. They should not have the right to shut down the, the speech of an individual. If we're to operate under the assumption that this is a violation of Twitter's free speech rights, then you're suggesting that Twitter is speaking for us? Like when I tweet with my face next to my words, you're saying Twitter is being compelled to speak? No, it isn't. It's a utility. It's, it's a platform. Everyone knows Twitter didn't say that. So what, what, what's the excuse? 
That's it. It's just a lie because they know. Right now, the Democrats are like, look, these people who run these companies are on our, are, are on our side. So we'll just agree with them. Conservatives, they're getting wiped out. And I, I think that was a huge contributing factor to Trump losing in, in 2020. I'm finding it's a very different situation to walk into Twitter's one of their buildings and start saying what you think and then getting arrested or taken out by their public private security. That's it's fine. private building. Yeah, it's a private building. But when you use a service online, it's not a private building anymore. So their right to censor you and stop you seems to end at the door of their headquarters or of their of their owned property. So I, that's kind of the way I'm looking at it. You know, if you set up your, your business in Walmart, Walmart can shut you down at will. But if you have a business on YouTube, you're not in YouTube's building anymore. You're not right. on the, their the, property. The, the, the big problem, I think, is, for one, people need to sue more. Mm-hmm. Conservatives sure. should have been suing. And you know what really annoys me is I hear from all these conservative lawyers, you can't because you're going to lose because of this precedent. I don't care. Just sue. Just sue. Just right. sue. James O'Keefe. Look at that guy. Yes. He's like, fires the missiles. <laughs> you know, and he just goes for it. And then he actually ends up winning, defeating a motion to dismiss in the New York Times case. Everyone said it can't be done until he did it. Too many, too many people aren't pushing back. They're getting censored. They don't sue. A lot of people sue and they lose, but good for them for at least trying. Set precedent. Get better arguments. I mean, all of this too is like, um, you know, they're they're trying to they're trying whatever arguments that they can come up with, because what they really want to do is they really want to control the flow of information, and they are un their worldview has been rocked to its core by Trump's victory. Yeah. And by the fact that there is stuff out there online that they don't like, <laughs> they thought they yeah. would be ushering in a new era of online, um, you know, woke, you know, new consciousness where everything they didn't see that, no. that, you know, there would be an underbelly. I mean, the underbelly is us. You know, you know what I <laughs> think? They didn't see it. I, I grew up online. I've had the Internet as long as I can remember. My, my family had CompuServe on DOS or whatever. Mm, nice. and we had, then we had CompuServe on Windows and then we had AOL. So I've been in the chat rooms and I have been exposed to the nastiness that is the internet my whole life. And I knew the trolls and the hackers and the memes. So growing up, I'm like, welcome to the internet. But a lot of these people, they probably did not have the internet at a young age. They, I, I, a lot of people I went to school with didn't have computers. So it was a time when I'm a little kid. I have a Windows 3.1 machine. Not everybody had a computer in their house. They weren't using AOL. Not only that, if the parents were, they're not letting their kids go in a chat room and hear them see nasty adult stuff. So what happens is these millennials, they grow up and it's not until they're teens they actually get on the internet. And they're in more safe environments with more restrictions. Now they're adults and they're, oh no, people are saying mean things online. How can this be? And interestingly, you know, Mark Zuckerberg and Jack Dorsey have, deci- have decided to side with that faction. Why? It's really simple. Take conservative, Take a liberal, put him in a room, and then yell a, a curse word. Guess who's going to care? Guess who's going to scream. Yeah, right. yeah. And so if you're running a business and you're selling donuts, and then you have a conservative and a liberal there, and one of your employees stubs his toe and screams, ah, F, guess which one's going to complain? So are they going to do in any way, any way pander to the ideology of the conservative who didn't care someone bur- blurted out a cuss word? Right. Or are they going to go to the Karen and be like... But that's 1.0. I think what you're describing is kind of 1.0 at 2.0 where we're at or whatever, whatever number we're at. Um, y- you've got 80% of the company, let's say from middle management on down, that is totally woke, that is going to revolt if you don't do anything. Exactly. So, you know, so if you're running the company, I mean, I, I know people who or heard of people who, um, you know, feel like they're not in control of their own company. That's kind of sad. It is kind of sad. It's, you know, once you let it grow to be too big. And you know what? This don't hire woke. Don't hire woke. Don't hire woke. If, if you're hiring woke, then you don't know the game. Never and get investors. Don't take investments if you yeah. don't need them. Right. Don't take investments, man. So, so you look at like the intercept with Glenn Greenwald. Get yeah. woke, go broke. Yep. Glenn Greenwald had to resign from his own company. He had no control over it. He created a monster. And now it's just rampaging around. It's a bummer. I mean, good for him for speaking out against it, but he made he made this machine. Of course, he has no control over you know, it. You know, and and they won. I mean, he's he's doing great work outside of you know outside of that that. Uh, and they've got his funding. That organization, but but yeah, right. 
Man, I mean, how, 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 how many years did he spend? Is, how many years did he spend putting his credibility on the line asking for the money? Right. The Intercept right now is a skin suit with some kind of skinwalker inside of it. And it's like, you know, it's like, <gasps> it's like the Ed, Men in Black Edgar thing. from Men in Black. Yeah. You know, that, you know when, yeah. when the bug alien is in the Edgar suit? Social <laughs> justice. That's, that's what it is. The New York Times is the same way. It just keeps happening. And uh, yeah. And look, I mean, they're, they're, they're like, you know, digital Hessians for Antifa, too. Because yeah. they will go and they'll, you know, they'll serve the purpose of marking the target. Thanks for checking out this clip from the TimCast IRL podcast. If you want to see the full show, come back to this channel, youtube.com slash TimCast IRL, Monday through Friday at 8 p.m., where you can leave comments and super chat, and we actually will read your comments on the show. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and if you want exclusive members-only content, segments you can't get anywhere else, go to TimCast.com, become a member, and we even have full bonus episodes. Thanks for hanging out. And we'll see you all next time.